<laughs> What's up, world? It's your boss, International Zoe. Barber World TV, I'm here in sunny Pattaya, Thailand with Austin Holloman. Good to meet you, brother. We kicked it a few days ago. Nice to meet you as well. Did an interview on your channel and it's good to, to catch up with you. I see you've been kind of trending on social media from your uh, perspective on relationships in America and uh, your advice for black men uh, in America and what their options can be. Um, let's just start from the beginning in case people don't know you're not familiar with you. Where are you from? I was born in Fort Worth, lived in Arlington. I just moved from Dallas. I stayed all over DFW. Okay. In Texas. So you Houston, Texas. Dallas. Dallas, Texas. Yep. Excuse me. Um, and your barber. Yes. You know, so we had that in common, you know. I thought that was unique. I saw some of your clips and you were standing in the barbershop. So what's life like in, in Dallas, Texas? Um besides the social life, I didn't it's 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 a lot of allergens in the air. I have really bad allergies. So going outside the country, that's a big benefit. But other than that, after going outside of the country, I realized how closed off and cold people are in that area. Now, if I go to Austin, Texas, it's not, I'm not, I've never, I haven't been everywhere in the United States, so I'm not gonna say it's all the US, but I've heard the problem out of all cities. But if I go to Austin, Texas, it's a little more open, but it's nothing like going to Rio or somewhere like here. Oh, we gonna get to all that later. I'm just talking but, about in general, for you, growing up, in uh, Texas, how was it? How, how was, how's life there? Where, how, where'd you go to high school and uh, what'd you do in high school? And, uh, and we can get to how you be, got into barbering. Yeah. Okay, uh, I, I went to Seguin High School, Juan Seguin High School in Arlington. I had a single mother, but a mother, but I knew my father very well. All my family's in DFW. Okay. Uh, I went to college, A&M Commerce, was about two hours outside of Dallas. That's where I started my journey for barbering. Well, I mean, I already been cut, but that's why I really got deep into it. What, what inspired you to get into barbering? They kept messing my hair cut up. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Because you know, I don't know if you ever thought, you like, man, I know I could have did that better. Right. Let me just try it. And I tried it, my mom was like, you did better than the barber. So right. I was like, okay, let me try it again. And for some years, I messed my hair cut up, but it was better than what I was getting. Right. I actually didn't perfect it until about 2020. 2020. And I started in 2016, so I don't know what took so long, but I got it now. But. And did you go to barber college there? Yeah, I went to barber college after about two years of cutting, mm -hmm. you know, just out of the house and stuff like that. All right, that's cool. And does she, you work in the shop now? Do you own the shop? Do you work in the shop? Uh, I have a suite, oh, so okay. it's like 700 square foot. Yeah. It's just me by myself. I don't really like working around too many other barbers. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, it's been a few years, but it's still kind of relatively new to the industry. Mm -hmm. The salon suites. Mm -hmm. I've seen this like, the first place I've ever saw it, I think was in the DMV. I saw some salon suites and then I saw some in Atlanta. And now it's like, it's big. It's not too big in New York because I guess the pricing of uh, just real estate, commercial space in New York is so expensive, it's a little harder to pull off in uh, New York City. Um, so, all together, how long you been cutting here? I'm at six years now. Six, six years. years, okay. And that's your main form of income? Yeah. Okay. So well, I thought- Not anymore. Not anymore? Yeah. Okay, so you gonna kinda go through YouTube? Mm -hmm. Okay. I can dig it, it's because I was wondering how you were able to travel when that would be, you know, it's a demanding job neglecting a lot of your clientele. Mm -hmm. So how do your clientele feel about you kind of stepping away from that? Man, the first time I went, the first time I went to Brazil for a week, that wasn't too bad. They, they could deal with a week. Then I went for two weeks. I was really going like, what, 20 days. And I, I felt that, I think I might have lost one or two people. I'm not worried about it. People moving to DFW every day. Right. But then I went again to Colombia. That didn't really cause too much of an issue. But now I still I'm still confident of saying if I ever decide to go back, right. I'd be able to jump. I'd say it'd be about like 50 percent of what I was getting. Right. I, I would struggle probably the first month or two, but I wouldn't come back to nothing. I still have all that stuff. Right. You know. Yeah, but I, I definitely stopped cutting a few times myself and. Um, so like when I, I was cutting, 
and then I stopped to do music and I was in the music industry for a few years and then when that was over I came back and I really had to struggle to build back up my clientele because they start depending on other people and they kind of feel a sense of uh, loyalty to the person especially if you leave and then this person took started taking care of them some people felt a sense of loyalty to the to person that you know saved them when I when I broke out and did my own thing you know what I mean so but I, I could dig it it's a, it's a um, barbering is a very demanding job time and energy that it takes to do that profession is, is very demanding and people are always dependent on you and that's that that could be a form of stress can't go itself. forever though yeah so what inspired you to do YouTube did you did traveling have anything to do with the YouTube or did you just decide to travel what what inspired you to travel? Perry, how old are you now? 23. Okay, you're 23 years old. What inspired you to travel and get your passport at an early age? So did you already have it? Uh, I didn't have my passport, but what inspired me to travel was I had did a lot of self-improvement. I know I'm only 23, but I had my own car, my own shop. You know, I was making good money. And uh, I still was getting like a low improvement in my social, a low uh, return in my social life. And so, you know, a lot of people make it seem like you're the problem, and I like I, I know I'm not perfect, but you can't just be all me. So I was like, let me switch the entire environment, the, the different continent, different language, different people, right. and I got a completely different result. And obviously, it was a result I liked. Right. And and what made you choose? Which what country did you go to first? Brazil. Brazil. And what made you choose Brazil? Did you do research online? Did you? check out some content creators that we say, okay, I'm going to go to Brazil. What inspired Brazil out of the first place? I've always been fascinated with Brazil. Uh, not just the women, but just the beach and everything, just the culture, the Portuguese and everything. And I found uh, Dennis Jean-Pierre. I found his YouTube and I kind of saw what he was saying about why he left the States, you know, as far as dating. And it kind of just resonated exactly what I was thinking. So he sold me, you know, and I went out there and I, I can say he lived up to what he said for sure. Right. Shout out to uh, Dennis. Yeah. Definitely um, had him on the channel. He's a good brother. And when was that? When did you first go to uh, Brazil? I went Carnival, so February this year, 2022. Like April. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because well, they uh, moved it. Yeah. Or I did you go in February and they didn't have the carnival? Yeah. Because yeah. I was there in February, they didn't have the carnival, and I had to go back in April. Yeah, yeah. They, okay. was, they were partying like it was, but yeah. they didn't have a parade. Right, right. So I, I missed that part. Okay, and, and uh, upon touching down and, and checking it out, what did you feel? What what, what was your, what did, what did you get from, like, okay, I'm here, I'm in Brazil, boom, this is how I'm feeling? Were you surprised? Were you shocked? Were you, who energize you? What was it? I was energized. Uh, I'll tell you, I was so excited. I didn't sleep but two hours that whole eight hour flight from Miami. <laughs> I couldn't, I just couldn't go to sleep. I took melatonin, still couldn't go to sleep. When we were flying in, the sun was rising, it was like all the mountains you could see, and I just knew I'm not gonna wanna go back. Right. I hadn't even got off the plane yet, you know. And then I got to the beach and I just saw all the people, and it was just cheap, just cool, and just. The energy was perfect. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, I got to figure out how to get out of the States. <laughs> and then I went back in May to make sure that it wasn't just that time of year. Mm -hmm. I got the same feeling. Right. So I got the same feeling. So I was like, yeah, I got to start working on how to get out of the States. Right. Now I'm out of the States. I would say, no, we're doing the interview. Yeah. I would say that um, my first few times, my energy was here. But it, it started dwindling a little bit. You know what I mean? Because I've been now probably about eight or nine times, you know what I mean, over the last three, four years. So my, my energy about it and excitement about it kind of dwindled down a little bit. And I, I you know, I, been, I went to Sao Paulo, I went to uh, Salvador Bahia, uh, I went to uh, Fortaleza, I even went to a small beach town, uh, like three, five hours up from Rio. Mm -hmm. So I, I tried out some other areas and maybe, but the lack of the Portuguese also, you know, limits how much, how far I can go, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, but still Rio is one of the places I do like. Where else have you been besides that? 
I haven't been anywhere else in Brazil. No, and oh. where else have you traveled? I know we're here in Thailand now. Where else have you been? So here, Rio, Medellin. Okay, Medellin. And what did you think about Colombia, Medellin? I feel like it was a warm up to Rio. Uh, it took me a couple of days, two or three days, to kind of just get over the whole scenery of that El Poblado area and actually explore to realize that that what you saw in El Poblado was not all the Medellin. Right. But I, I loved it. I loved it. I'll be back, but it's still not better than Brazil. If you ask right. Me. And uh, probably uh, to compare, you would have been better off visiting Cartagena instead of Medellin. Because mm -hmm. I would, if I was to compare the cities. Medellin would be in comparison to Sao Paulo, maybe. Mm -hmm. And Cartagena, you could maybe compare to Rio. Not that there's there's a beach and beach life there. There's hot weather and, and melanated people there. Whereas in uh, Medellin, there's more European-looking uh, Colombians and, and Pisces and stuff like that. Uh, so, You've been to three countries now or more? Okay, three countries. And still, Rio is your favorite. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So that gives us an idea where you're from, um, you know, what inspired you to travel, and just um, how's, how's things been going for Austin in regards to, because your viewpoint on the relationship or the dating culture in America it's pretty strong. It's, 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 it's harsh, a little harsh and blatant for a young, you're a young guy, you know what I'm saying? You're a good looking guy, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, when I was your age and young, and, you know, I mean, it surprises me that you have that standpoint because, in my opinion, I know some guys, I mean, definitely any guys who are not the norm, maybe in America, is going to have more problems than. The, another type of guy dating and, and everything, you know, because it, it goes along with looks and success and all this other stuff. So any awkward guys or, or, or you know what I'm saying, unattractive guys or, you know what I'm saying, they're going to have more problems than the average guy dating in America. So we know their reasons for going out and reaching out. Yeah. But, yes, there's this, you know, it's, it's I guess it's been brewing for some years. And um, tell me about, like, why you decided to speak out on it. Um, why did you decide to speak out on it in that fashion? And um, is it just where you are in your region? Or, you know, have you... Okay, you're 23, right? So, and, and my, my, my son is 23. So, in my mind, you know, I, I'm like, okay... I, how many relationships could this dude have had at 23? You know what I'm saying? He's good looking guy, should have not too much problems with the ladies. You know what I'm saying? So, but you coming off pretty strong. So I don't know, just tell me about what it, you know, how, how you got to that point. So I've always, for the past two or three years, I've always wanted to speak out on this. Okay. Uh, but. Of course, like I said, people try to make it seem like you're the problem, so I kind of just kept it. I would say stuff here and there online, but I wouldn't really get too deep into it because uh, I was also thinking about, oh, I don't want to run off my clients, and I got to a point where I just didn't care. But I've always had a strong opinion on it, but once I went out and I seen that I got a completely different result and that there was a different culture, that, hey, maybe, maybe it is me. It's just my personality ain't just for the States. It's not for the States. It's for real. You know, wherever, wherever else I travel to, that's why I keep traveling so I can know more and make sure that's where I want to be at. But I felt I had some authority to speak out because I'm like, no, it has worked. I'm not just some incel. I mean, yeah, incel that's not the king. It's not that I was not getting any women, yeah. but it was just, it, it wasn't worth all the effort, you know, I had to go through. And I had a relationship, I had two relationships one was a serious relationship, the other one wasn't too serious, but it was enough to call it a relationship. And the first one, I didn't take that with me. You know, I didn't judge every other, like, you know how women will do that, they'll, mm -hmm. one dude to hurt them and they'll put it on every other dude. I mm -hmm. didn't do that, but I did make myself aware. But I kept, when I got back out in the market, like, damn, it's a lot of people that ain't shit, basically. No. And 
do you think, well, I, I, I think that's part of um, American culture. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, everybody has their own version. You know, like maybe the relationship between black Americans and white Americans is different, but it's American culture that bred the mentality mm -hmm. of the people there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So even with the issues that a lot of brothers have with black women, is they didn't create that on their own. You know what I'm saying? And so you just done with done with the American women and you're gonna seek your, your refuge elsewhere. Yeah, I'm not even attracted. <laughs> I, when I went back to the States, especially the first time when I got back from Brazil, I didn't talk to anybody. I might have had one slip up, but I, other than that, I wasn't approaching anymore. I was like, it's not worth it. Cause I just went somewhere and it was completely different. Right. I gotta get back over there. Right. I'm so you just boycotting the yeah, American I mean, women? Yeah, you, we, we could call it boycotting. Right. I mean, They've been boycotting us. So are you not open to even get into a relationship in America? No. That's what I'm that's what I'm asking. No, never again. I can dig it. I can dig never. it. I can dig it. it the, the risk is I'm not saying I'm afraid, it's just the risk mm. is so high, but I'm just very confident in saying that I probably would never find anything that my bar is too high now. Right. Far as far as I mean, because they have beautiful women in America. Yeah. But as far as Man and woman relationship, your bar's too high. I mean, okay, mm -hmm. let's say you've been to Brazil two times. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you find a girlfriend in Brazil yet? Mm -hmm. But I know I shouldn't commit to anything yet. Uh -huh. But I did have two or three people I was talking to seriously. Uh -huh. But they still knew that when I come to Brazil, they're not going to be the only one. Okay. Because yeah, I'm 23. So you still doing your thing? Yeah. I can dig it. I can dig it. I get it. So tell me what has happened since you've been speaking out and your channel, what kind of feedback have you been getting? I mean, I know a lot of brothers have started to have you on the channel and, you know, you're probably ruffling some feathers. So just tell me what the feedback has been like. Uh, so about feedback, I've gotten a lot of feedback from people that, honestly, keep it blunt, I don't really care about. People I've been knowing forever, but they, their opinion does not matter to me. Right. This is my truth, but one thing about me is I have the ability of being nonchalant. So all the, the hate I'm getting, it goes right over my head. Right. One ear and out the other, I, la I laugh at it. Right, not reactionary uh, But too. I've been, man, I've been called gay. Uh, you going to Brazil to marry a man. Like, okay. Uh, well, those are trolls. Yeah, but it's a, it's a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you just picking the wrong ones, which, hey, I can agree. They always the wrong ones, I guess, if I, they made me want to go somewhere else, that boy's picking the wrong ones. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to sit around and roll the dice to do the right one. When I, I just found somewhere where I could, whenever I do decide to settle down, it, it's, it should be effortless. So tell me how your mom feels about this. You know, uh, you was raised by your mom. Uh-huh. And you was raised by your mom. And do you have brothers and sisters too? Yeah. Okay. How does your mom feel about, you know, you being so outspoken about these things? Does she, does she have a different opinion like, you should give black women a chance, or she's like, baby, go where you're happy, I don't care. She says both. My mom is confused. My mom knows <laughs> that I get a lot of my stories from her. Having a single mother, the stuff I see my mom doing made me very aware at a young age. Between my mom and my, the men in my family, I was very aware of what they call red pill now, mm. of how female nature was, but it's, she, she limits what she says. She supports it, but she doesn't watch any of my videos. Uh, so she you keep downing American women. I'm not downing American women. I'm explaining what I've seen. It may come off as downing because I'm speaking from a passionate tone. I have a little anger in my voice sometimes, uh, a frustration. Not anymore. I don't care anymore. I'm out of the States. But she, I'm trying to figure out the best way to answer this. She, she supports it, but she knows that she knows, my mom knows that she doesn't get a pass with me either. I'll tell her about herself too. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so tell her what the name of your channel is. Austin Holloman. Austin Holloman. And how long have you had the channel? Uh, I started that channel last year, but I was talking about barber stuff. Okay. But I didn't start posting this Brazil content and all that travel content until July. July. And how many followers you got so far? 
26,000 as this morning. Yeah, you're moving pretty fast for a, a new channel. And do you think it's because it's your, I guess your standpoint on things? That's, it's, it's, it's moving like so fast? It's, I think it's definitely the, the bluntness I have. And, yeah. You know, uh, maybe I don't fit that, like you said, the typical incel look, I work out and all that, so they're like, uh -huh. people think I'm making this all up. But mm. a lot of stories that the fat incel dudes have, I have the same stories. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's just, I don't know, I think people just find it very relatable and realistic. And I'm very unfiltered, as you know. Uh, <laughs> I tried to work on it, I, I can't help it. But <laughs> I, I think it's the unfilteredness and it's just the, it's that shock value. I'm not trying to be shocking though. That's just mm -hmm. how I talk. The way you are. Yeah, that's yeah right. I can dig it, I can dig it. Um, I don't know if there's anything else really left to say. Do, well, what do you consider your channel? Is your channel about relationships, or is it just about you? Or it's not necessarily a travel channel. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more, is it more about relationships? Yeah, I would say it's more about uh, yeah relationships, social social issues, mm -hmm. social issues, self improvement. I talk about I talk more about the social issues and self improvement. Mm -hmm. but yeah, just what do you call it? Like a lifestyle channel? Not a, I wouldn't say lifestyle. You got time. You, you, you got time to, to, yeah. to find your place. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm doing it like it's a live yeah. video. Yeah. Uh, don't, 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 um, you can say, man, you're trying to find your way still. Yeah. Exactly what, what your channel's gonna be about. Yeah. Make sure you go subscribe to Austin Holloman. That's my YouTube channel. I have a Facebook group, a Discord. You can contact me at Austin Holloman at Gmail. That's the best way to contact me. Get your passports, it's really that bad. <laughs> Peace. Thank you, brother. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Subscribe, snitches.